We're finally back with the 1982 Yamaha YZ125. So if you guys missed the last video on this bike, we picked it up for 850 bucks. I was thinking I was getting a pretty good deal. The seller said that this bike was running and driving when put away. So I was thinking maybe, you know, a carb clean, a new spark plug, and this would be good to go. We got this thing back home, started digging into it, and found that it was missing a lot of stuff and had a lot of problems. So it was missing the whole power valve in the cylinder. The piston was about three sizes too small for the cylinder. Um, the cylinder was junk, it looked like it had just been bored out. The clutch wasn't in, so you couldn't kick it over. And uh, pretty much everything was shot in the engine. So piston we couldn't use, cylinder we couldn't use, and uh, the power valve was missing. So we took it all down to the crank and found that the rod bearing was also junk. So there's no way this thing would have ran with a bad rod bearing, a missing power valve, um, a piston that was like three sizes too small, it was like really loose in the cylinder, and then a cylinder that was just like freshly bored out. <laughs> Not even honed. So somebody was lying along the way. I don't know if it was the seller or the person the seller bought it from. But the seller had stated he was just too busy to start digging into the engine. He said all he did was take off the clutch side, which would show a lot and you could see the power valve from there. So I'm guessing the seller started taking it apart, found so many things wrong with it and decided to sell it the way it was. So we are going to rebuild the whole thing today. Luckily it came with an extra engine so we can use uh, the better cases from it. So this case right here with the transmission, we're gonna swap everything over into these cases. We've got brand new crank bearings for it. Those are in the freezer right now. And uh, all the other bearings are good from the other case, so that was lucky. We got a new steering stem bearing kit. The steering on this was super stiff, you can see. So those definitely need new bearings. We got a used crank. They don't make new cranks for them anymore, but uh, the rod bearing feels really good in there. We got a new cylinder. This was really hard to find. This actually came with the power valve as well. This is the assembly we were missing to begin with. So now we do have that and the cylinder looks to be perfect. And then we got a Weisco piston to match the cylinder. Gas kit for it and a new air filter. It was missing the air filter. So today we're gonna be rebuilding the whole thing and uh, hopefully getting this thing to run and drive for the first time since buying it. All right, we've got the crank bearings in the freezer right now. Let's get some heat going on the case and hopefully that bearing will drop right in. If not, we'll press it in with the press the rest of the way. Right in here. Nope. <laughs> Not quite wanting to go in. I don't think I had the bearings in there long enough. All right, we went ahead, used the press, pressed it in the rest of the way. And you can see how nice and smooth that is all the way in. And the seal goes on that side. So that's looking good. All right, let's work on the next one. A little bit. Both bearings are in, perfectly smooth. We just messed those up. 
I didn't realize one had a bigger hole than the other one. So you can see the stator side where the flywheel goes on has the larger diameter hole and the clutch side has the smaller diameter hole. So, yep, but we got it sorted out and uh, everything's good to go. So what we're gonna do now is swap everything over from that case, all that transmission and put it in here. So lock into place. And then on this one right here, you're gonna have a sear clip. So that's on the second groove going in. Like that, then there's gonna be a washer. And you've got your gear. Get your other washer. Get your circle. So getting the shift forks in. So there's going to be shift fork one right there, labeled one. That's going to go in first. One goes all the way down to here. Just push that off to the side like that, and then there's gonna be a shift fork A that's gonna go next, but uh, we'll get the smaller one in first here. So this is shift fork two. So you're gonna go in second here, just like that. And we can get our drum in. You can see no wear on the drum at all, that looks good. Got the bearing on there. So that just slides right into here. All right, shift drum is in place. Now we can get the other shift fork on there. You wanna get these in the grooves. The correct grooves are supposed to go in. Like that one. Like that. There's the shifting star right here and a little woodruff key so you can't mess that up. Get the Loctite on there and get the screw in. See, transmission spins smooth and it's shifting through all the gears. All right, transmission's back in. Let's get some of these crank seals pushed in. This one's going to be right here. And you can see there's a spring side and a non spring side on the stator side. So you want the non spring side facing out. Push that in. And what we can do is take a socket and just pound that around. All right, one crank seal in. Let's do the other one. One has a spring on both sides. So you can push it in either way. Get that pushed on. All right, that crank seal is seated. Looking good. Just gonna lube up the bearings before we put the crank in. We have a little assembly lube here. Can use that. Looks good. Put 
I like to put a little oil on the gears too. And the forks, where things move. So it can only go one way here. All right, that looks good. We're using some ultra black gasket maker for the cases here. Put a little bit on this case and then a little on the other case. Other case half going on. Things looking pretty good. Let's see how hard this goes on. Not super easy, huh? Get our tool on here. So far it's going on pretty straight. I think we got it. Let's see. Crank is moving. That's good. All right, we got the cases together. Crank spins smoothly in here. Transmission spins smoothly. So now we're going to get the stator on first here. So stator will go on. Just like this. And we're gonna put it back right to where it was. And we can mess with the timing here as well. Get a couple lock washers for those. Got the woodruff key right here. So that can go on to the shaft here. There we go. And our little flywheel can go on. Line up the woodruff key with the notch. Should slide right on. There we go. Nut goes on.
perfect. All right, so the crank gear is a little complicated to go on. So you've got a bigger gear and smaller gear. This one's going to control the water pump. So you want that one down first. And you've got this little woodruff key with a notch in it right there. So this one has a shallow notch, which we're gonna add right there. So you put this one on like this, and you can see the cutout side on this one is at the top. You can, so this side's gonna stay up like this. So what I'd like to do is go like that, stick the smaller end of the woodruff key through here. And you can see that gear is now stuck in place. I'm gonna take the bigger gear, and there's an end on it like that and one like that. So this is going to go like this with that and down. So just like that. And then you're gonna put the nut on. Torque that down. All right now we're getting the clutch on. So I already got the rod down there washer goes on like that then we've got the bushing here goes on and our basket goes on I'll drop in like that we've got another washer like that and you've got the inner basket Our lock washer goes on like that, and then our nut. And torque that down and fold over that lock washer. already dropped the ball bearing down there. There's another small rod on here. You've got the springs that go on. And then you've got your bolts. These are eight millimeter. Get those started up. All right, we got the clutch all together. We got the shifting mechanism in there for the shifter. We got this gear on. This gear is for the water pump. And that kind of floats in there until the shaft from the water pump fits in there. And then we've got the uh, got the power valve governor here. That's gonna fit into that bearing right there. So everything has to line up perfectly when we put the cover on. It's a little tricky. Um, so we'll try our best and uh, get this thing all locked up. Otherwise it would fall right out. All right, I think we got everything. It's definitely tough to do. You've got the kickstart gear over here. Finally got that cover to go on. This is a new cylinder we had to buy for it. The old one was completely damaged. So as you can see, the cylinder looks really good. We bought the matching piston for it as well. 
So before we hone this out, let's get the power valves out. Well, of course it's stripped out. Let's see if this side's stripped out. That side's coming. Cap should pop off of here. All right. Let's try to get that bolt out right there. Might have to drill that out. Almost there, broke off. Shoot. So hopefully we can get it the rest of the way out with the uh, vice strips. There we go. Moving. That's out. Right there, there's an Allen. Let's try to get that out. Just like that. And this bolt holds everything together. And this goes over it like that. It's pretty simple. Not too complicated. So now we can hone this thing out and then clean it up. All right, we're gonna coat the cylinder with a little two-stroke oil before we hone it. Help out that home. Oops. You want to check it with magnet? You can see it sticks to the cylinder. If it doesn't stick, that means it's a nickel plated cylinder, most likely. And you don't want to hone that, but this is a steel plated, so we can 
hole in there and pull this out. Doesn't take very much. This one was already pretty clean. This one didn't have any imperfections or anything, so just took off a little bit. You can see now, nice cross hatches on the whole thing. All right, so you can see the cross hatches on there now. Looking good. All right, using a brass brush here, I'm gonna dunk this in. Start cleaning out the cylinder here. All right, cylinder's all cleaned up, looking good. Let's take a look at the piston here. The brand new Wysco piston. Get this out of here. Let's see here. Looks good. Got our pin. And then our sear clips. This is just a one ring piston. Let's see if it's the right size piston. Oh yeah, perfect. We'll measure the ring gap. Get that in there. And you can see the ring gap right there. Looks perfect. We'll quick measure it with the feeler gauges. Probably 12 thousandths of an inch. See if we're right. A little bit bigger. Uh, maybe 14. Yep, so the ring gap is 14 thousandths of an inch. That is well within spec. And this ring does have a number on it right there at the top. It says N50. So when you put this ring on, which we're gonna do right now, you want to put the number facing up when you install it, so just like this. And then you want that pin to be lined up right there. So that's that's basically it. We'll get a circlip in and we'll get this piston onto the engine. So the ultra black going on, and then we've got the gasket that goes over that. Just a very small amount here. I already cleaned off the surface with brake cleaner. So everything's nice and clean. You can see we do have the dowel pins in already. Piston ring. Piston. Just using a little two-stroke oil here. Everything gets lubed. Get 
with our new bearing here. Get that on first. There's an arrow on the piston that will be going towards the exhaust side of the bike or the front of the bike. Alright. We'll get the other circle up in there. Alright, we're going to oil up the cylinder here. Put a little bit on there. Two stroke oil. Get that nice and lubed up. Now, make sure our ring is lined up, and we'll get the cylinder on. Make sure our piston goes up and down. Oh yeah, nice and smooth. All right, before we go any further, let's see if this thing kick starts. If not, we have to tear down the whole thing. <laughs> so hopefully, it will here. Oh yeah. Nice. That is really smooth. So luckily, the kickstart mechanism is working. And to replace that, you have to split the cases. So hopefully that doesn't go out anytime soon. But uh, let's work on getting this head on. We've got the bigger O-ring for the outer gasket and the smaller one for the inner. So let's lube these up, a little oil on those. Get the inner one on. Sometimes you're going to have to stretch them. Yeah, this one needs to be stretched just a little bit. Get the outer one. This one is a little trickier. Oil that up. Just like that. So the head's going to go on this way, just like this. All right, torque spec for the head, 18 foot pounds. Let's get those torqued down.
All right, let's get the reeds on here. Just gonna put a little gasket maker on here to hold that gasket down. Gasket on here. Get our reeds on. All right, stator cover going on. Got a brand new gasket for it. Let's see. All right, water pump cover going on. Get the gasket on here. Right, engine is all complete. Let's get this thing back into the bike frame. All right, engine's all in, hoses are all hooked up. Let's see, it goes like this. I believe like that. All right, and there's a nut that goes on. Just like that. Good. All right, let's get this carburetor off. Start working on that. This needs to be cleaned out, gone through. Make sure uh, there's no missing parts. Haven't gone through the carb yet. So right away, needle looks good. Slide looks good. Cable was moving up and down, so that was good. So let's check out the car. All 
Oh, it's dirty. It's gunked up pretty good. Get those floats out. Doesn't look like it's missing anything. That's good. Let's see if the pilot's clogged. Oh, that's open. Looks like a 30 pilot. Can't believe that's open actually. Main jet coming out. A washer on there. See the main jet's at. And it's so gunked I can't see. Let's see. Yeah, it's hard to tell. We'll come back to that. All right, and then the air screw is on the side over here. Assuming he turns out. We're at a quarter of a turn out. Should be a spring in there. Good, so it doesn't look like it's missing anything. Everything's there. It's not coming. We're gonna have to leave that in there. And just hope that isn't too bad. Choke looks like that's working. tube coming out it looks clear so car wasn't too dirty we'll get uh, everything cleaned out with the air compressor let this thing soak for a little bit come back reassemble it and we'll get this thing on the bike let's get this car back on here so the notch part of the slide goes towards the back of the carb or the back of the bike. There go. Make sure our slide's working. Looks good. Now we can get this carburetor on. Let's get a new air filter in here. Can't remember if there was one in here or if it was just really dirty. Pretty dirty. All right, here's the new filter. Let's get 
get that oiled up. Rub that in. Get that in. Put a little grease on the outer edge here. you all right now we need gas line going from here to the petcock all the way down to the carb over here. Let's see if quarter inch will work. I think it should. It's gonna be pretty tight. All right, so we'll probably cut it like right. Just mixed up some 40 to 1. Get that dumped in. is working here. Looks like that's working. Cool. Alright, we got a brand new plug going in here. Again, let's feel the compression on it. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get some oil in here. It takes 800 milliliters, stamped on the case right there. Get some oil going in. more. Just a tad more. There we go. Coolant fill is way up here on this machine. Hopefully it doesn't leak. <laughs> We're gonna find out right now. Somewhere. 
clamp is loose. All right, not leaking anymore. It was leaking from over here. The clamp down in there was loose and the one right here on the frame was loose. And this thing actually goes through the frame, it looks like, which is really strange. So it goes to the bottom down here and through the frame. That's so weird. <laughs> but it's not leaking anymore. So if you guys look right here, the power valve is missing a little bracket piece that's supposed to look like this. So I found one on eBay, it was like 60 bucks, just for that little piece. So unfortunately, that looks like that was missing as well when we bought the machine. So I didn't realize that until it was a little bit too late. So we're gonna leave the cover off and hopefully that rod will still go up and down and pivot on there. It's not gonna be opening up that power valve, unfortunately, so um, we'll have to wait to get that. Here we go, first start on the 1982 Yamaha YZ125. Hopefully she fires up here. <laughs> we'll see. Choke it. Gas on. Oh yeah, she fired right up. Sounds really good. Just have to get it to idle. bad at all. Sounds pretty good. Smell that. Mm. leaking at all. Sounds amazing. Wow, 
Wow, that sounds really, really good. Not a single drop of oil or coolant coming out of anywhere. It's idling perfect, nice and low. I am very impressed with this thing. So, we're gonna see if this power valve's working. I'll kick it over. I just wanna see if this rod moves up and down. All right, we're gonna start this up. You guys watch this rod here. See if it moves up and down. that part for it, the power valve should work flawlessly. Sounds really good. Well, this thing could not be running better. I'm really happy with it. Really happy with the way it turned out. Engine sounds great. No knocking, no leaking, super tight. Um, starts right up, idles really low. So, I mean, it is good to go. Um, the plan for this video was to rebuild it and then take it for the first ride like I always do. But unfortunately, this bike needs a little too much um, to do that. And I just don't feel safe riding it at this point. And I don't want to break something that doesn't need to be broken by riding it right now. So we need to get that linkage for the power valves. I really don't feel comfortable riding it without that linkage there, opening up that power valve. I don't want to wreck the bike by riding it right now and not having that. Um, also the rear brake, I believe it's missing brake pads. I went to adjust this brake today and it goes all the way down. And as you can see, that lever is hitting, hitting the hub there. So the brake pads are either really worn or missing out of here. And I went to adjust the front brake, and that's not working. So we were missing the attachment down here for the front brake. So it's just like a little pin that goes in here with a bracket, and that hooks to that bracket. So the brakes do work in the front, we just don't have them hooked up. Um, so right now, as it sits, we have no brakes and actually no clutch. The clutch cable was locked up and I believe it was the wrong one. It was about a foot too, too long as well. So we couldn't ride it even if we wanted to. And I noticed this kickstart lever doesn't retract back. It should have like a ball and a spring in there. So when you pick it, it'll fly back and hold tight to the engine there, and it's not doing that. You can see it's just flinging back, flopping in the wind there. So we'll have to order that up as well. And probably new sprockets and chain. The sprocket in the back's getting pretty worn. It's really pointy. That should be squared off. So the list is pretty long and extensive. I've put a lot of money into this bike already, rebuilding the bottom end and top end. I actually had to buy a second crank for it because the first one was out of spec for the clearances and I didn't feel comfortable installing that. So I've got about $400 in the cranks right now for this bike as well. So we'll have a ton of money into this bike by the time it's done. But uh, stay tuned for next video when we rip this thing for the first time. So I hope you guys enjoyed the process of picking this thing up for 850 bucks, looking it over, finding out that we pretty much got scammed on this bike and then rebuilding it and uh, doing the first start on it. But uh, yeah, it runs great, and next video, 
we'll take it for the first rip. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. And until next time, we are out.